Hey gang, welcome back. Now that we've left Gen Chem in the past, we're ready to finally move on and start doing what we came here to do, which is organic chemistry. But before we start getting into some of the real chemistry, we need to talk about functional groups. This is going to be a really short video. I just want to go over some of the terms you're going to need to know, and these will come up all the time. So just these are the type of thing that you need to memorize, be able to pick out structures, because we will be doing chemistry with these types of functional groups. So a functional group is just a type of um, grouping of atoms. And whether it be just carbons or oxygens or nitrogens or some mixture of those, we need to be able to know them and they have certain names. So we need to be able to talk, talk, so people that do organic chemistry take us seriously, right? Okay, so let's just go through these real quick. These are the type of thing, if you Googled organic chemistry functional groups, you could find a nice page or flashcards and just memorize them real quick and you'll be good to go. Okay, so if you saw a structure just like this, where you're just like in bond line, right? You're just zigzagging. This is what's called an alkene. And we've seen a bunch of these, right? Methane, ethane, whether they're two, four, eight carbons long, they're generally called alkanes. So these are and are prime. This is just to signify, okay, you're going to see this and then other stuff. Um, so term, a term that is you know, unique to alkanes are that they are completely saturated. So in an alkane, you're only going to have carbon-carbon bonds, and the rest of the bonds for every carbon are comprised of carbon-hydrogen bonds, right? So you're just going to see carbon-carbon-carbon-carbon, and then they have the rest of their bonds filled in by hydrogen. Okay, so now moving down here, this is what we would call an alkene. So you're going to have at least one degree of unsaturation in an alkene, and what I mean by that is that instead of having all carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds, there's going to be at least a double bond or a triple bond. But for alkenes, double bond. That's what you need to think of. Down here, we have an alkyne. And what's characteristic of an alkyne is that there's a triple bond. So while an alkene has one unit of unsaturation, an alkyne has uh, a two degrees of unsaturation in the same place. So a triple bond, you know, there's three bonds two units of unsaturation along with a single bond. Down here, if you were to ever see a six-membered ring that has this kind of configuration of alternating double bonds, we'll get back to this later. It has its own uh, kind of unit in OCHEM2 that we'll cover here at JOCHEM. This is what's called an aromatic functional group. So see this ring with alternating double bonds? Bam, you know it's an aromatic. Okay, so now let's move up here. Everyone's favorite functional group if you ever see this type of uh, OH off of a chain, this is what's called an alcohol, right? So an alcohol functional group, super easy to pick out. All right, now if you see down here, if you were to just in an, in an alkane chain at some point, you see a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen, and it has to be in the middle of the chain. So maybe here, as an example, I can draw it down here. If you saw something like this, this is what's called a ketone, okay? So it has to be in the middle of the chain, can't be at the end. The reason why it can't be at the end is because this has a certain name. So if you have kind of like a ketone, but it's on the end of a structure, or it's at the terminal position, the terminal carbon, that's what terminal means at the end. So if I were to actually throw an H over here, and this carbon was to be the end of this chain, it's not a ketone, it's actually called an aldehyde, okay? So has, these are super similar, just make sure you know that if you kind of have like a ketone at the end um, or a C double bonded O at the end of a structure, it's an aldehyde, but if it's in the middle of a structure, it's just called a ketone. And if you're wondering what those red asterisks are, I'm going to discuss that at the end of the video. Okay, so let's just say you kind of have that C double bonded O at the end of a structure on the terminal carbon, but then you see instead of just there being an H, you have an OH. There's a special name for this, and I know you've seen this before. This is actually called a carboxylic acid. So we've seen stuff like this before, like acetic acid, carboxylic acid, but it's a, that's the special name for how many carbons are in that acid. Okay, so now let's say instead of you know an OH at the end, we have an O and then a continuation of the carbon chain. This structure right here is called an ester. Now be careful, right? You might just see this, kind of ignore this, and be like, oh, it's a ketone. Careful. 
you have to recognize, oh, okay, I see this right here, I see this, I see the C double bonded O, but then I see this O and then the continuation of the chain, that's an ester. Some kids trip up on that sometimes. Down here, if you were to have a carbon chain uh, and you see an NH2 or in the middle of a carbon chain, let's say you saw something like this, does, it, can be a, it can be terminal or it can be in the middle of a structure. This functional group right here is called an amine. So for all you Breaking Bad fans out there, if you remember people saying the word methylamine, all that is is CH3, NH2, right? It's an amine attached to a me, uh, one carbon chain methyl group. Okay? Just a little fun fact right there. Okay. So, again, kind of going along with what we talked about the esters, if you see this C double bonded O next to a nitrogen and then a continuation of the chain, this would be called an amide. All right? I know it looks like a mide, but it's actually pronounced amide. And finally, if you see you know, a carbon chain, you run into an oxygen that's in the middle of the chain, you see the chain continue, this is called an ether. Okay, so it has to be kind of like this. An example right here, you saw something like this, this would be called diethyl ether because we have a two carbon chain, that word to describe that is ethyl and an oxygen. We'll get into common naming and naming in a few more videos. Okay, so now let me kind of unravel this mystery of the red asterisk. Okay, so in every scenario where I have a red asterisk, you can see that there's this C double bonded O, right? It's right there, it's right here, it's right there, and it's right there. There's a special word to just refer to this C double bonded O. Anytime you have that, you can refer to that as a carbonyl. Okay, and here's how this works. I mean, like, I'm not trying to say that there's two words for one functional group. Here's what I'm saying. If you're trying to reference this, func this C double bonded O in the ester, you could say, oh, I'm going to talk about this, the carbonyl carbon in the ester. Or you could say the carbonyl oxygen in the ester. Or the carbonyl carbon in the aldehyde. Or the carbonyl oxygen in the amide. So know these functional group names. Kind of understand that if you're going to reference carbonyl, you can kind of reference one specific part of a functional group, whether it be the carbon the oxygen and the C double bonded O. But know these. You're going to need to use these words all the time. 